How's it going, you sexy beasts? With the non-disclosure agreement being lifted this past beta weekend for the Elder Scrolls Online, I decided I'd try my hand at constructing a few videos for you guys. I've got a few more planned, but the first bit of the game I'd like to show off is one of the first dungeons, and I decided to make the voiceover aspect of this kind of themed to fit the game. If you like the storytelling in this video, let me know. If not, I'll go back to being as informative as possible when covering the game. This dungeon in particular is the Spindle Clutch, the first dungeon you'll come across as a member of the Daggerfall Covenant. This is a level 12 to 15 instance area and involves assisting the Fighters Guild as they're tasked to clear out the nests of these massive spiders. Upon our arrival, we discovered the original expeditionary force sent into the caves have gone missing, and that the commander, Sud Harim, had been captured. Did the Fighters Guild send you? As word reached the guild hall? We made a terrible mistake. We thought we were clearing out a simple spider infestation. But it's far worse. The whispers, they never stop. It's maddening. We got out, but our commander, Guardian Sud Harim, is still in there. And my fighters are exhausted, but if you push into the caves and clear out the spiders, we'll use fire to destroy their eggs. Praxen Duar, the leader of the remaining Fighters Guild Warriors, mentions some whispers that never seem to cease. We pay the statement no heed, and he informs us that he'll follow suit and torch any egg clutches. After making our arrangements, we navigate through the caverns of the Spindle Clutch. The group I ran with was a rather interesting one. My Dragon Knight's current build is for soloing out in the wild, so I'm a mixture of damage reduction, health regeneration, and damage output. The Orcus Dragon Knight was primarily damage oriented, and the designated defender of our group was another Dragon Knight wielding a sword and shield. Our health replenishment was a combination of the Orc dropping a healing will that gave us health regeneration as we stood within the radius, and a Templar wielding a restoration staff to mend our wounds. The first few tunnels of caves were no match, as swarms of spiders tried to protect their homes. As we moved forward into a naturally lit room, we encountered the first enormous spider of this particular area, which Praxen had called the Spindlekin. This mass of spiders stood atop half a dozen corpses of fighters guild warriors and had plenty of defenders at its back and call. As we engaged the enemy, it would periodically call of assistance of swarming spiders from nearby nests and spray a thick coat of web across the ground which would hinder our movements. Though Spindlekin was a daunting foe, it was no less defeated and subsequently its nests burned. As we progressed, the amount of spiders grew and grew. It seemed as every spider we squashed, another took its place. After the open cavern had been cleared of any remaining hostiles, we began to hear whispers from a strange voice. Get through this. Don't let the whispers get inside your head. Fill it with pleasant thoughts. We sought to advance ahead the stairs, and we were greeted by another massive spider, which we could only assume was the Swarm Mother. She leapt toward our defender and began to hatch the very eggs around her, causing more spiders to join the fray. Only moments into the fight, she leapt atop our healer and slew her within a single blow. The fight had waned and the Swarm Mother eventually fell to our swords.
The following chambers held a room of fallen Fighters Guild warriors and a locked alien door. Whispers into our mind once more, and we discover Praxen to be the murderer of the previous expedition. As the voices seep into our minds, he turns on us by drawing his blade. The whispers are intensifying, and the next group of opponents to stand in our path are a pack of fighters, guild warriors, driven mad by the whispers. Beyond these soldiers, we come across a hearing of sorts, where Cerise the Widowmaker is standing before more people driven insane. Our defender advances to attempt to communicate, and we're met with combat. Cerise the Widowmaker is made no more. We recuperate and continue forward to find another group of corrupted warriors led by a knight in heavy plate that they had called Big Rabu. People were my friends. I should have been the one to put down the crazy bastards. The others aren't sworn to serve Meridia. She protects her followers from the curses of the Daedra and the undead. Look what they've done to me. The people I knew are gone. There's not left in them but madness. Madness and the will of the Whispers. I take it you're immune too? The corrupted beings were surrounding a dark elf by the name of Falor, which we discovered was immune to the maddening voices that he worshipped the goddess Meridia. I cut him free and allow him to leave this terrible place. It appeared as if the caverns were beginning to end, and we stumble upon another bound soul. Blood and faith, are you real? Can you hear me? Please, get me down! May tall Papa bless you, friend. I thought I'd met my end. Please, get me down. His name was Ottavar, and seemed to have protected his mind at the blessing of sorts. Without questioning it, I cut him loose and allow him to return to his fighter's guild brethren. For blood, for glory, for power and might, we of the guild will always fight. For good or evil, day or night, we of the guild will always fight. So long as the price is right. We entered the final open cavern to find an abomination set before us. She was obviously the source of the maddening whispers and voices, which I've given her the title to easily convey that. The Whisperer. A demonic being, no doubt, probably spawned forth from oblivion to serve Molag Ball. The spider fused being was going to pay for what she had done. We met her in battle and began to purge her presence with extreme prejudice. Her thick carapace and plenty of webbing made the fight rather difficult for us with blades. She would spin her web on us and pull us right in as she slams on the ground which would more than likely kill us if we wouldn't move in time.
She employs the very tactics her namesake gives her by filling our minds with the thoughts of unmatchable odds as phased spiders descend from the ceiling. We're too much of a match for her and dispatch her without any difficulty. Guardian Sud Harim is held against the wall of the same room, and we awake him from his nightmare. It was a nightmare. A nightmare. I feel so violated. What that thing did to my soldiers. What it did to me. I may never sleep soundly again. Thank you. If you hadn't come along, well, I don't even want to imagine. He awards us with some medium armor trousers, and we depart from the spindle clutch, which is now free of any Diedrich influence. If you enjoyed hearing the tales of the mighty adventures in the spindle clutch, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to hear more stories like this, and more from the Elder Scrolls, make sure to subscribe. It won't cost you a single piece of gold.